right, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening, at least here in Kansas City. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar today from the Aviation Weather Center, which will feature our new uh, experimental beta website. So thank you for joining us today. And this webinar will be recorded, just so everybody knows that. And eventually, we will get it posted up on our YouTube channel. We're hoping to do that within a week or so. So if you need to go back and review some information, it will be available for you at a later date. Your attendance here today makes you eligible for WINGS credit. So uh, please keep that in mind. It may take a week or two for that to process, but by attending today, you will get that credit uh, for yourself. Uh, my name is Jennifer Struzes. I'm the Warning Coordination Meteorologist here at the Aviation Weather Center located in Kansas City, Missouri. And today we will be featuring our techniques developed meteorologist, Austin Cross, and he is one of the developers of our new experimental beta website. He's going to do a little drive through of our features that have been translated into a new format and a little walkthrough of our website as well. Uh, we ask as you are going along and you have questions that come up, please use the questions feature that is in the GoToWebinar. And we do have a lot of our other team members online standing by to answer your questions. So at this point, um, Austin, I will go ahead and turn it over to you. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, yeah, thank you all for joining us. And so uh, I'm going to start here with just a, a few slides about uh, why we decided to do this major upgrade to our website and then get into a bit of a demo going through some of the various pages and uh, definitely look forward to your questions. So starting here, so this has been kind of a, a long time coming. We, we receive quite a bit of feedback about the website uh, all the time. And there are a number of issues that have come up over the years where things are maybe a little bit inconsistent between different displays and so on, and uh, kind of tough to attack those um, individually. So we decided to go ahead and overhaul the entire website, kind of take it back to the, the stud, so to speak, and uh, re redevelop, trying to capture all the functionality that folks use and rely upon. Um, but with these various goals in mind of modernizing the website, increasing the consistency so that products are displayed in a similar manner, it's easy to find your way around, improve the supportability for us to um, better better keep the website working for everyone. Definitely mobile friendliness is a, a huge thing that we'll touch on in a second here, and just improve the overall performance and ease of use of the website. So here's what the uh, the front page looks like. Probably one of the biggest features, of course, is the GFA. We've, uh, this, this new version is called the GFA Low Altitude Tool because we're combining together, uh, hopefully all the best features that were found in the current GFA tool, as well as the HEMS tool for our helicopter low altitude folks, and give it a whole new updated design with a large full window map so that you're able to take up as much of the screen real estate as as you want and uh, get a bit better picture of what's going on out there. Mobile design, a huge thing for us that um, the current website is a little bit tricky to use on smaller screens like phones. And these days, mobile um, users account for over 50% of all traffic on the web. But you can especially see this in aviation, where folks are using the iPads in the cockpit and that kind of thing. So we really targeting uh, developing the site to first work on a mobile device and then scale things up to work on desktops and laptops and so on. I uh, th thought it was notable that uh, last year's Apple event uh, presenting the iPad mini release, uh, they actually showed it being used in a uh, helicopter. So here's an example what that looks like uh, pulling up the, the GFA LA maps on various screens. You can see how things kind of adjust to, to fit uh, things like menus and so on, kind of collapse down so to not take up so much space, but you can still get to all the same great features uh, no matter what kind of device you're using. Consistent look and feel is a huge thing for us, making it a little easier to navigate by having things uh, have the same uh, appearance and and so you get used to using uh, one page it should be very easy to transition over to another and know exactly where things are 
We also implemented a dark mode, uh, specifically thinking about places like air traffic control centers, but also just using the websites at night or uh, yeah, various uses like that where you don't want a, a bright white screen uh, shining in your face. Uh, this makes it really easy to switch the site where the, the background is dark with text and other features uh, light on top of that. And it also fits in well with uh, things like Windows and iOS uh, offering a dark mode feature. So it'll automatically pick up on that and make the website adjust. Uh, similar to the consistent look and feel, having navigation the same, the same menu bar is available on every single page so that no matter where you are, you can find your way around and back to whatever you're looking for at that time. And also making a PyRep submission a little bit easier by no matter what page you're on, you can pop that up, and submit a PyRep and get right back to where you were. Also have implemented an archive feature. So if for some reason you needed to go back and look at previous weather uh, by accessing this, you can actually see any product on the site uh, as it was displayed at a previous point in time. And as I mentioned, this is all very much driven by feedback from our users, whether it's uh, GAA all the way up to the, the FAA controllers and planners and so on. So feedback is really essential. Um, we're, we've been really pleased by the outpouring of um, responses. We, you know, we understand it's a very important site for a lot of folks, and so really great to hear uh, both the pros and the cons of this new site and the changes that we've made. Um, really happy to get all that feedback. The comment period is still open. The site is in an experimental status. Uh, we hope you check it out and let us know what you think, whether it's through this webinar or following up at a later date. Really appreciate all that feedback. So I think we'll jump over to the website itself in just a moment. So here's a look at the front page of the website. And we tried to keep this pretty um, simple, high glance value. So you've got a, a map of the current conditions, a uh, thing scrolling at the top of various new features and uh, other things to be aware of, and then featuring some of um, particular products on the right-hand side, uh, in this case, pointing folks towards the, the GFA as well as DSS graphics, but we hope to uh, keep that uh, updated and relevant to very seasonal changes and so on. Scrolling down the page, uh, we've also got a way to get your, your closest METARs and TAFs just to keep them out front um, before diving in to look at more weather information and also to help keep things fresh. We've got uh, our Twitter feed on there where we post the latest SIGMETs as well as uh, other features and highlights such as uh, this recent post about uh, how many icing pyreps we get this time of year. So looking at this page, um, we've got a menu bar across the top and a, a common footer along the bottom. Those will appear on every single page, so no matter where you are, it should be easy to navigate your way to what you're looking for. And so I think we'll start off by going into the GFA. Um, the most common way to uh, get into that and to start diving into looking at weather information is to click on the weather menu here and we have observations at the top and then various uh, forecasts uh, separated out by the particular kind of weather and the idea is to have sort of a comprehensive view for each thing so you'll get um, not only forecast information, but also AIRMETs, SIGMETs, uh, center weather advisories, and so on, all in one place without having to jump between products. So if we start off here with observations, see that pops up a kind of a plethora of information, but observations are probably one of the busiest parts of the website. Um, just so many different ways to look at what's going on currently. And this is the, the default view that we've got satellite and radar, METARs, PIREPs, uh, SIGMETs, and even um, uh, aircraft reports um, on automated ones out over the ocean. So I think, uh, yeah, so, so starting out, uh, just like the current GFA on the, our current aviationweather.gov, we have a time slider across the bottom for navigating through time. 
in the case of observations, of course, just going back in time um, and yeah, going back through about 18 hours worth of data. No matter where you are on these maps, there's a info button in the bottom right corner and that'll pop up the legends and these are designed to be relevant to the current information being displayed so these would be dynamic in this case showing all, all the relevant uh, information for METARs and PIREPs, the radar um, you can scroll through that information that stays up on the screen so that if you're navigating your way around zooming in and so on you can keep that legend uh, present now, as I mentioned, the observation tab is a little bit busy. Uh, so one of the, the key things here in the upper right, we've got various tools. The first one is to be able to select layers being displayed. And so we try to keep these pretty uh, reasonable defaults that are, are useful for everyone, but there are additional features as well as you may want to uh, turn certain things off that may not be relevant or to be able to focus in on particular um, things that you're looking for. So in this case, you can see that we've got the satellite and radar on. Personally, I often turn off the satellite as I'm looking through things. It can be a little bit distracting being that it covers the, the entire globe and so on. Uh, we do have an additional image available, the global lightning. Uh, so we can see in the Southwest, some, some blue areas there indicating um, clusters of lightning occurring down there. Uh, also, another new feature on this particular display is the ability to display fronts and pressure centers. So these are from our friends at the Weather Prediction Center. Uh, the latest analysis updated every three hours. Particularly popular feature to be able to um, quickly get an idea of where the most active weather might be occurring. Let's see. So then. But we jump over to a forecast to get a better example. So uh, going over to ceiling and visibility, you can see the time slider is adjusted so that now we're going out into the future. We've got a gridded forecast uh, here displaying flight category. Go over to the legend, we can see that that corresponds to LIFR, IFR, and MVFR. We also have overlaid with it various weather symbols. Um, pretty relevant to the, the causes of the ceiling and visibility obstructions. But also you can see that we've got sigmets displayed here, uh, of course being summer, mostly convective sigmets, uh, and, but we also have uh, airmets displayed, our G airmets, uh, in this case for IFR, and it would be displaying mountain obscuration if there was any present at this point. So I guess going through a few more of the, the tools here in the upper right, again, we have the uh, layer selector. In this case, more limited uh, number of options for uh, forecasts, things relevant to ceiling and visibility, but this can uh, also unlock other features. So right now we're displaying a flight category forecast, and I guess not any ceiling issues going on right now, but if we switch over to visibility, you can kind of dial into the specific concerns that you might have. Uh, so going beyond just the general flight category of combining the ceiling and visibility, look at the specifics, and that will of course adjust the legend. So uh, dividing it out into various categories of uh, statute mile visibility. I suppose we can keep jumping through various kinds of forecasts. So ceiling and visibility is our first one, and then go over to clouds. This offers very much um, the kind of information that was in the old text area forecast, where we have various cloud bases and tops, as well as the presence of cirrus. If we click on one of these, we'll get a little bit more information, and you can zoom in and the number of sample points will uh, kind of adjust to the display as you zoom in so you can get quite a bit more detail down to a uh, pretty good level. And I should also mention, uh, so we're focused on CONUS here, but the uh, coverage does extend quite a bit further out east into the Atlantic, as well as west out into the Pacific, covering the Hawaiian Islands and north up into Alaska. 
and you can see the Alaska air mats there, quite a few for mountain obscuration. Jumping forward, uh, we have precipitation uh, covering uh, areas of, uh, we can see light rain and heavier rain, as well as quite a bit of smoke and haze out west with the fires going on out there. You can even see some fog off the coast with Stratus. Uh, again, the, the legend is really helpful here where you can see the various types of precipitation that might be displaying on the map, rain, snow, um, a mix of the two, icing and uh, severe thunderstorms. Uh, we do have on the layer selector here that you're able to switch to um, displaying just information about thunderstorms and their coverage or winter weather, which of course we don't have any at the moment. Switching ahead here, we have a dedicated tab to thunderstorms. Uh, since that is such a um, big weather issue for aviation. So beyond just having the thunderstorm forecast and those weather symbols that we had before, we can also add the TCF forecast as well as the SBC convective outlook. And the idea that all of these things are able to display on the same map is various overlays that you can turn on and off so that you won't have to jump back and forth between different sources going over to the, the Storm Prediction Center to find that information, trying to make it a one-stop shop for aviation forecasts. Going a bit further, we have wind information. Uh, this here, the, the maximum through the column, but uh, likely that you want to select the particular altitude of interest and so the winds is the first product here where we've got a level slider on the left hand side to select levels of mean sea level and you can see how that changes the display as well as the wind barbs if uh, perhaps unfamiliar with the the wind barb um, uh, interpretation you can also click on one of these and get the specific direction and speed Let's see, going forward, then we have turbulence information from the graphical turbulence guidance product. And again, have an altitude slider going all the way up to 48,000 feet, as well as options for a more summarized view of above 18,000 or below 18,000, and displaying, again, the rel uh, relevant uh, sigmets and airmets. In the case of below 18,000, we've got uh, low uh, turbulence air mats displayed, as well as, uh, see, we have a low-level wind shear area. Uh, I guess, yeah, I mean, speaking of low-level wind shear, we do have also a gridded display of low-level wind shear. That's working here, yeah. You can see that kind of highlighting areas to focus in on, probably want to look at more products like the air mats or uh, TAFs for more specific information, but this kind of gridded display can really help uh, focus attention on areas that might be of concern. And let's see, our last weather tab is icing. So a uh, plot of icing severity. We are planning to add very shortly icing probability and super cold liquid droplet potential as well. Uh, but one other gridded display we have on here is the freezing level. Uh, relevant to icing concerns, and you can see can the good coverage there. Let's see if we switch back to severity. I think maybe we'll go through a few more of these tools. So after the layer selector, we have a little cogwheel for more map options. So we're hoping that these are pretty reasonable defaults that are that are useful for most folks but uh, everybody has their, their own needs and particular kinds of things that they're interested in. And so there's quite a bit of customizability to all of these maps. Uh, so data layers being uh, various geographical overlays, things like SIGMETs, AIRMETs, METARs, uh, all of these can have uh, various levels of configura configurability, like displaying the uh, relevant heights for your segments, as well as uh, increasing or decreasing the opacity to make them uh, a little bit more visible. Similar kind of customizability for imagery, where um, particularly more relevant to uh, satellite and radar displays. 
Going down to map format, a particularly popular option is to switch to a local time if you're not familiar uh, with UTC or Z and, and um, have that kind of uh, conversion in your head. You can qu quickly switch that over and you can see how the, uh, the currently displayed time is updated as well as even the, the time slider here showing in our local time zone. If we were over in uh, observations in just one moment, let me. Get on a decoded view of METARS, you can see that even that is displayed in local time. I guess speaking of METARS, that's probably the area with the biggest amount of configurability where um, perhaps you're not interested in all of these elements, want to make the display a little less cluttered or uh, need the uh, icons to be a little bit bigger, you can definitely do that here can activate that decoded display as well as switching over to metric units and also including the TAF so that um, when you're looking at a particular METAR, it's got the TAF as well. You can see pretty pretty good conditions here in, in uh, Kansas City with sky clear throughout the period. So back to map format. Another uh, big addition is the uh, various base maps that are available. So um, by default, I have a pretty simplified map to hopefully get yourself navigated, show the uh, state boundaries and, and lakes and oceans. But we have a number of new options here, such as a high resolution satellite imagery as a background, and also VFR charts. So pulling in the official FAA VFR navigation charts uh, with quite a bit of detail. You zoom in here and give it a second to load. You can see all that great detail as well as topographic information and so on. Uh, and then also IFR charts as well. So displaying the um, airways and jet routes and so on, uh, just as you would see on the sectional charts. And switching down to map features, uh, there are a number of different overlays you can add. Of course, the, the jet routes and the airways are now available as a base map, but you can turn those on and have them pop up over uh, things like satellite imagery. Uh, also uh, get information about individual airports. If we click on one of those, there's wealth of information directly from the FAA and things like runway configuration and so on. And we jump over there are a number of others like highways and roads, uh, lat lawn lines and so on. So all this customizability, uh, you might want to be able to share the uh, particular configuration you've got with a colleague or, or create a bookmark for yourself or send it over to a different computer. We wanted to make sure that that sort of functionality is accessible without nece necessarily needing to register for an account and so on. So we now have a bookmark feature here where it displays a link uh, with all the different changes that you've made. In this case, you can see in here in the link, um, changing the base map and the time zone and so on. So that uh, if you copy and paste this link or put it into a bookmark, you can come right back to where you were. Let's see here. So then the next tool down is our cross section and flight path tool. So here you can enter in a flight path. There's various different ways to do so. A little question mark uh, will take you to some more information. Go to just draw a path. You can see how that, give a second here to load, uh, display that great circle route between stations and of course can add um, kind of as many as you'd like. And it also takes uh, airports, uh, navigation fixes, VORs, uh, a number of different options. And it should be able to take basically uh, a, a flight path string uh, and directly copy and paste that in there. But one of the new features is then adding a cross-section capability to be able to see things sort of more in three dimensions. If we click on cross-section and pull up something like temperature, you can get a section going in this case, from Kansas City to San Francisco to Seattle, you can see the uh, 
Rocky Mountain and Sierra in between there showing up on the bottom of the screen and temperature along with a legend of uh, what that's showing you. This should update uh, as you go through time and displays a number of different variables. Um, just a couple here, temperature, wind speed, uh, clouds, turbulence, and icing all in a vertical cross section. So going a little bit further down the list, we have a feature to go to any particular site. So say we put in Seattle Airport, that'll pop up, uh, navigate the map over to that particular point and pop up the relevant information. We've got Mutar's Taft's Airport selected here. And so, yeah, I guess I should mention that uh, no matter where you click on the map, it should display every single uh, uh, information about everything that's displayed at that particular point. So if there's a SIGMET and a METAR and a, uh, uh, an AIRMET all in one place, you'll be able to get all of that information through a pop-up just by clicking on that point. And then we'll see if this last one works on this laptop computer. Oh, it's, there it goes. So the, the last one is to jump to your current location and that should work especially well on tablets and phones. Uh, but even here on this laptop, it seems to be working well, jumping over to Kansas City. So good way to quickly get over to your current location. And then uh, these other two buttons that I haven't mentioned yet, if say we jump over to uh, turbulence, zoom out a little bit. So there are two main modes, the general aviation mode, uh, offering the the information general, uh, traditionally available through GFA. And then our helicopter icon here is for things previously available through the HEMS tool, our low altitude mode. So that switches over from uh, mean sea level rel uh, relative information over to uh, that from AGL. I don't know why it's not displaying the grid at the moment. Uh, but you can see here going from the surface up through 5,000 feet and relative to ground. Uh, also a um, shorter time horizon for, for things more relevant to those sorts of users. So those are the main weather features on GFA. Of course, we understand some folks want to dial into specific products. So if you click on the products menu, there are a number of the same sort of features available, but in a, a different um, way of viewing things. You can click on SIGMETs, uh, get just those displayed, and GRMETs, uh, Center Weather Advisories, and so on. A uh, new feature that just went live today is we now have uh, interactive prog charts. So great way to get a multi-day outlook uh, say you're planning for uh, flying out this weekend. Uh, all that information that was available in our old prog charts that were static images, now you can zoom in um, as, as needed and get all the same great information about fronts and uh, weather that is forecast. And let's see, I also wanted to highlight, which we do have TAFs available in this graphical format. Uh, another popular feature is area forecast discussions. This is now displayed on the map, so a little bit easier to navigate all the different offices out there and clicking on any of these will pop up the relevant uh, aviation discussion along with a link to the full discussion from the, the local forecast office for more weather information. And I guess just rounding out the, um, the rest of our toolbar here, uh, terminal weather dashboard, great way to look at specific airports. Uh, the archive view, that, that feature I mentioned to be able to look back in time uh, at what was forecast. Uh, status page to, to find out uh, if, it's, if it's just you or that there is an issue with the site or our reception of data. And then uh, one of the, our, our key features is to be able to submit a PIREP if you register with us and that'll pop up uh, wherever you are on the site. And if you're logged in and have that permission, that'll pop up in a little dialog box, can quickly get that sent out and get back to looking at weather information. So that's the tools menu. Uh, we do have a, a social media presence, so linking to our Twitter and Facebook, as well as our testbed where we um, work on research to operations. 
no matter where you are on the site, there's a little question mark in the upper right hand corner, uh, provide a wealth of information, uh, far more detail than I could get into this evening about each and every uh, product that we have on the website, as well as all of the symbology, every little uh, symbol that might pop up in a METAR is documented here. And we do have uh, accounts and this is the way to switch to our dark mode. But the uh, the last feature I'd really like to highlight, we, we definitely appreciate uh, all of your feedback. So if you don't have a question this evening or, or can't get it in, uh, we'd love to hear from you. If, if you do have uh, suggestions, uh, come across issues, uh, that sort of thing, you just click on the envelope icon and qu quickly get an email directly back to our developers. Uh, and we, we really appreciate that input. So I th think that kind of covers all the, um, all the things I was hoping to show. So I think uh, perhaps time for questions. Uh, hey, Austin, we have a number of questions uh, coming into the question box. One that folks are asking is, can a user save their display preferences for pages? Sure, so so we're we're hopeful that the uh, the bookmark capability that I mentioned um, should should help with that uh, by just clicking into the map options and going to the bookmark section. Uh, this should have everything that you configure about the display uh, can can save that off and get right back to where you were, including the um, where where you had the map centered and and how zoomed in and so on. Another question is, uh, someone wrote, if I choose local time, will the time zone be shown on the screen? I didn't see it in the demo. Ah, sure. Yeah, so it, it uses the, the local time from uh, your computer or device, and in the option where that's enabled, it uh, puts in parentheses here uh, in the Kansas City area with in the same time zone as Chicago, uh, and so that should be updated for uh, whatever your particular device is uh, configured for. Austin, we have a question. Um, when do you expect this site to go live? Yeah, very good question. Uh, so th this has been experimentally available since the spring and definitely encourage folks to check it out. Uh, our hope is that um, assuming everything's up to snuff and, and feedback is is positive, uh, we do look forward to making this the official website uh, in the time frame of uh, late this year or early next year. Uh, Austin, we have a request. Uh, could you run through a simple scenario of looking at a flight plan, uh, say perhaps from KOJC to KSUS, and looking through some of the products? KOJC to K. What was the second one? KSUS. KSUS. So yeah, if we draw that path. See, flying across Missouri here from the south side of KC. Um, so I, I'm not a, uh, a pilot myself, but um, definitely step through various weather. So we've got uh, METARs here and can see if we zoom in and should plot to, at each point uh, that you have and um, Pop that up, but you can see METARs along the route. We switch over to forecasts. Give me a second to load there. Yeah, clear skies around here, so nothing showing on, on ceiling visibility. And I'm sure uh, clouds will be similarly empty here. Uh, I can move on through to precipitation. Of course, uh, not raining here either. And then thunderstorms, I think, are primarily in Florida right now. Um, but if we go to winds, this uh, lost the barbs there. Um, you can see as as we've zoomed in here to the the um, 
the scale of the state of Missouri, uh, getting a little bit more detail along the route, and I think you can even get uh, a little bit more as we zoom in. So that's wind, and then turbulence, pretty pretty quiet. Over to icing, and let's see why is that not? Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. And then yeah, still still quite in the warm season here. Uh, so that that's kind of how um, the general GFA workflow is. Uh, that rather than needing to jump to specific products. Uh, like SIGMETs and AIRMETs. Instead, you can go by weather phenomena and get all of the relevant information, whether it's forecast uh, up to advisories and warnings in the form of AIRMETs and SIGMETs, so that all of the information is in the same place and should make it a little bit easier. You can see how we, we jump through those various um, weather for a particular time period uh, pretty quickly. Um, and of course, probably want to jump through time for each one as well. Uh, you can do that by, by clicking or dragging the, the bar across as well as using the arrow keys on your computer. So the idea that hopefully it's pretty quickly to get through quite a bit of information. I think maybe in addition to then uh, using these various plan views, you might want to pop up the cross-section tool. If you have put in a flight route, for the first button is to just draw that on the map, but if you click on the second one to enable a cross section, can then um, show that information in um, uh, a vertical form as well. All right, so thanks, that, Austin. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, we've got, we've got a couple of questions. Uh, folks asking if the VFR sectionals will be kept current or if they're just there for guidance. Yeah, good question. Um, it's it's definitely a, a, a reproducible thing where we're able to download all the charts and mosaic them together. So we're definitely planning on keeping them up to date. Uh, we already download a lot of information from um, the FAA 28-day update in order to keep things like uh, airport runways and so on uh, current, as well as updating all of our station information. Uh, where METARs and TAFs are. So yeah, our, our plan is to keep the VFR and IFR charts uh, up to date on a similar cycle. Uh, we had a question here uh, when putting in a flight path was there an altitude on a sidebar um, it looks like this uh, person wasn't able to see it on the demo oh I, uh, as a cross-section probably yes um, so each of the cross-section displays has uh, the altitude along the left hand side we are planning to make this a little bit more configurable uh, obviously, a lot of GA folks not going all the way up to 48,000 feet, uh, and so we can provide a little bit more detail in the lower levels. So that is coming soon. Uh, but indeed, to have the altitudes along the left-hand side, and then displaying the um, stations or, or VORs and so on, the, the various intermediate points as well as the start and finish along the bottom. See, I guess uh, seeing a, a couple uh, questions here. Uh, one asking about um, the examples being Apple centric. Uh, will this work on Android devices? Yes, we we definitely um, have been testing it on uh, both iOS and Android, as well as uh, you know various desktop browsers, Chrome, uh, Firefox, Safari. Um, 
just so happens a, a bunch of our examples were uh, from iPhone and iPad, but uh, as a, an Android user myself, I can I can confirm it works well on Android. Awesome. We have a few people asking if the tasks will be decoded in plain language, if that could be done, uh, just like the METARs are. Yeah, ab absolutely. So uh, let's jump over to TAFs here real quick. So th the TAF map displays them uh, in, in the same form that the, the METAR show. So that's uh, sort of one way of, of decoding it, but also if we go into the configuration, by default, it's just displaying the, the raw TAF, but um, by going in here to the configuration, selecting decode TAF, um, all of these will be decoded for that particular time. We jump ahead, it will then update to uh, the forecast at that time in a decoded form showing breaking out visibility, cloud cover, winds, and so on. Austin, I've seen a couple of questions asking about an app. Can you just explain how the mobile uh, website will sort of work like one? Yeah, at, at this point, we, we can't uh, really support developing uh, an app like, like you might see on an iPhone, uh, but the site is, is definitely intended to uh, scale and work very similarly to uh, what you would see from a native application. Um, if you are on Android, it'll, it'll probably actually give you a prompt if you, if you want to add an icon to your home screen. And I know on an iPhone, uh, you can go into the menu just uh, like like you're making a bookmark and say add to home screen. And it'll put, a, put an icon on your home screen and launch just like an app pull you into the website uh, minus the uh, the URL up at the top. And really e everything on here is designed to not only scale to fit the screen, um, you know, whatever size phone you might have, but also work well, uh, you know, with a, a finger input on a mobile device instead of something like a mouse, so that all these menus can be, be tapped on and, and the map can be dragged around just like you might see in uh, Google Maps. So very much uh, intended to work, hopefully just as well as a, a native application might. I also saw another question asking if they'll get notified when the new website goes live. Yeah, I, I guess I don't know uh, all the different notification methods out there. Uh, we, we have it on our current uh, website pointing out that please do check out the preview. Um, and once the site goes live, it'll be at the same address. So if you have aviationweather.gov bookmarked somewhere, uh, it should st still continue to work and instead just pop up the new site. Uh, but there would definitely be various notifications issued. Uh, the Weather Service has a, excuse me, a standardized process of issuing service change notices. And uh, I'm, I'm sure this will be disseminated far and wide, uh, definitely on our social media and we'll, we'll definitely try to, to give folks as much of a heads up as we can. Um, a couple of people are asking if this new site um, could be used as an official pilot uh, briefing, weather briefing. So they get <laughs> into uh, regulatory questions and all. Um, but uh, my understanding that, that folks are uh, able to self-brief and there's a couple of different aviation circulars out there about uh, how that works and, and what products to look at. Uh, definitely aviationweather.gov strives to, to cover uh, all the necessary aviation weather information. Uh, although I know for, for briefing purposes, also want to make sure you're getting things like NOTAMs that we don't currently um, provide. Uh, we do not, though, uh, track uh, what users are looking at. So if, if you are looking for that sort of uh, briefing capability where there's a record uh, for future use, uh, that, that's not something we currently provide. And unfortunately with that, we are out of time. 
Um, I do have to say thank you so much, Austin. You and your team have done such an amazing creative job with this website. Um, I know I'm biased, but I think it's going to be the best website in the National Weather Service. And I'm happy that it's about aviation because I love both very much. Um, and personally, my favorite feature still is the dark mode because I run my phone in dark mode and I love having that option. And it works so well on my, on my mobile device when I'm traveling. So um, thank you again to your team and uh, we really appreciate it. As Austin mentioned, we do still want your input. So as you're looking around on this website, if you see anything else that you wanna contribute, there's a link to a survey that you can take that uh, is on beta.aviationweather.gov, or you can send us an email. Um, please be sure to contact us. Uh, again, we uh, will be allowing a WINGS credit for uh, sitting through this webinar here today. It's, again, please be patient. It may take a, a week or two to get that all processed, but you will see that, um, see that credit show up. And our, this webinar will be posted on our YouTube channel, which someone had also asked in there. It's NWSAWC is our, um, how you can find us on our YouTube channel, but it will also be emailed out to this list once it is posted so that you'll have that information available. Um, I thank you all very much for joining us this evening or whatever time zone you're in, if it's a different time of day. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us today and we hope to hear from you soon. Take care and have a great evening.